What's up gang of good people? Welcome back to the stream. Welcome back to the channel. I am just playing back through this beat that I started making a while ago and today we're gonna go uh, you know get into the hard works and all of that but um, for the most part I'm just like regretting yesterday's stream so much because for those of you who don't know I stream every single day uh, every weekday at least 2 p.m. and uh, yesterday I like had to change the sample rate during my stream to compensate for this horrible CPU usage up here and uh, OBS spazzed out and I did the whole stream talking without actually like <laughs> realizing that it wasn't being heard so that sucked so I'm gonna go a little do a little bit better today um, but I'm gonna rely on you guys if you have any uh, feedback if the stream is starting to lag out or sounds bad for any reason then please tell me because I'm not actually monitoring it I can't while I'm working so yeah let's get on with the kids um <clears throat> as usual I've been busy as all hell uh, with my onslaught into creative commons music so I release all sorts of different types of music online I've been doing it for five years and uh, people use my music in their games and their videos and they credit me and uh, some people commission work for me and that's kind of how I roll I just finished a whole bunch of new uploads. Um, I'm going through my back catalog and getting stuff on Bandcamp, and I've just switched streaming services providers. So, yeah, bunch about me, but uh, yeah. Today, let's get into the stream and figure out what's going here, going on here in Ableton. Okay, so process-wise, for you who've been following this whole process, this is a track by the name of Track One, as you can see up here. And it's the first track of 10. And I'm releasing 10 of these tracks as Ableton Live templates and Creative Commons music tracks to the community. Um, patrons get the templates for six bucks a month or more, and the community gets the music for in exchange for credit, so for free. Um, that's the MO here. Now, I'm currently, I've gotten to the end of this entire pack of 10. So I got to the end of the you know, the initial composition, and now we're starting on the second pass. So the idea here is to take uh, what I've got here so far, this arrangement, and to just make it sound um, just maybe like 50% better. So that's a combination of mixing and a little bit of adding some sounds to it. But basically, we're, we're trying to create a dark and pulsing, kind of grooving, dystopian sound, uh, something that could be used with, you know, cyberpunk storytelling. So, um, yeah, let's see how we can go about doing that. Um, starting from the beginning, I'm going to get, I'm going to rely more heavily on filters for this, um, for this section. So what that means is we're going to hear stuff like this. Uh, where is it? Get the pre-master out and what I want to do now is... Just disable this kind of high end, but not do it so brutally. It's, uh, let's let's do it a little bit more, a little bit more finesse. So, I think one idea, one good idea, is to get um, an auto filter on this track. Or well, actually, just let's see, we'll see what kind of filters we've got in the browser. Cool. <clears throat> Okay, uh, auto filters got some effects. Let's get one. Let's just try one, one or two of these out. So I'm going to put literally just go through them, put band pass spinner on the pre master. Let's see how that sounds. That's not bad. Let's just get a. to disable that then at that point let's try a different one beat mosaic not really what I'm after BP spreader in fact you can just hit Q to open up the uh, hot swap mode and let's see uh, one thing at a time let's try them out this has got an MS2 filter on it let's see how that goes to move this is an old classic Ableton standard so I'm actually just auditioning filters now that might be useful throughout the entire um, 
procedure. So throughout the entire uh, pack of, of 10 tracks, I'm not just listening out for what might be useful in this track. I'm thinking ahead for the rest of the tracks. I'm trying to find a sound that could work uh, in conveying this kind of dystopian edge feel. Um, one thing that might help is to listen to the reference track, which I don't play on YouTube because it causes uh, copyright streams, uh, stream takedown notifications and that. Uh, so I'm going to just listen to a section of it in my own ears and see if I can figure this out. Figure out um, which filter, which kind of filters they use. I think it's mostly like, you know, it's dubstep stuff. I'm looking for moments where filters are being used to cut off either the highs or the lows or maybe both. Okay. If you're uh, new to the channel and you're just stopping by, let me know what you're up to today. I'd enjoy chatting to people while I work. There we go. That's the kind of thing I'm after. Of course, it's a very um, notch, a notch sounding filter. So we're looking for a kind of a notch filter here. So let's find one. That's a bit too wonky, if you ask me. Let's keep on finding them. This morph filter, I wonder how it works. It's OSR morph filter. Uh, well, morph, there we go. Cool, I'm just going to map that to a MIDI knob and see if I can get some love out of it. Just give it a... be that just one of the bands gets um, morphed so it doesn't actually have to apply to all of them but I think this also has to be a kind of moment um, so for example if I stuck OTT onto the premaster it seems to be like the case that everybody just uses OTT to pump the mix up to beyond extreme levels you're going to hear all of the low sounds and the high sounds and then at that point we can kind of um, knock it off all right so i've got an idea here for a an intro i'm just going to call this group um sort of intro maybe uh, and that's going to give me an opportunity here to, um, not intro, but um, filter morph. Yeah, let's call it that. I'm going to give it an effects title of filter morph. What I want this to do now is to serve as a type of um, once off moment for each of the tracks so you can hear what's going on so now wait a minute. firstly i've got to just fix something here we've got uh this text is going to text ord which is going to pre-master but it's way too loud so i think text ord is also getting some of this ott love okay cool so i'm just kind of working through this track here figuring out exactly how to make this intro moment sound cool And also, I just don't like the way it uh, drops off there suddenly. We could just um, kind of create an, a once-off intro. So I'm just changing the arrangement here so that this um, kind of just tails off. So let's give it one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. Okay, good. And then we'll take the modulation of this and just fade it off, basically. Where is the modulation? MIDI control. Uh, it's actually mixer and we just take the track volume down at this point so there's a fade out happening here we'll just select all of that and I think you can just drag this one down yeah there we go cool cool so now with the combination of this uh, this should be affecting this a bit more hectically okay Alright, 
the uh, next thing we could do is just beef up the, the kind of core groove a little bit, the kick and all that. So I'm just going to pump this up in my ears. So there's a vacuum cleaner in the background. You can't control who you live next door to and when they vacuum. not too bad let's turn that on and then first thing we want to do is just make sure that the automation for this uh, it looks like I recorded that um, the automation for this goes off so show automation not the cutoff but the so let's just take it off and then just turn the uh, turn it back on up over here and uh, do it but oh, cool no then again Mouse click, mouse click. Let's try it again. Off and on. Okay, cool. So what we've got here is a... Yeah, that's the effect we're going for. Now we just got to modulate or we'll just record this. It looks like I'd already recorded it. It's not really the... Oh, that's a pad that I've recorded. Okay, that was the last time. Let's record this part now. So it's straight up to the top. Get a feel for how this can be. Okay, here we go. Three, four. No, we're on the wrong patch. There we go. Uh, we don't record the input, just the automation. Here we go. drops off automatically and you've got the tail and it fades out so yeah, that's kind of an intro okay uh, one thing I want to change is this this should only come in about here actually let's let's not bring it in yet okay that's cool now I want some kind of sweep so I'm just gonna search the library for typical sweeps. That's quite cool in terms of uh, this sort of cyberpunk sound. Vengeance is always good for a couple of sweeps. Let's see how it performs. Please don't crash. Oh, the suspense. That's a bit orchestral for my liking. Short, mediums, and highs. You can't really hear these because they're in the browser, but um, I'm just previewing a couple of different sounds. So at this point, we can just include like a standard sweep sound. I'm going to just stick it onto a new sample track and call it sweep. Cool. exciting stuff okay if you're into Ableton Live if you enjoy making music me producing music with Ableton Live this is a good place for you I mean I hang out here pretty much every day just getting on with the work um, but uh, yeah I enjoy meeting new people most of the people who drop by this channel are uh, are new like according to my stats like 80 percent of 80 or 90 percent of the people who stop by are new so it'd be cool if you, uh, yeah, if you stop by, let me know what brings you here. That's super useful information. Okay, one day, my life's goal, kids, is to afford a studio where I can actually close the door and it closes. It makes no sound. The sweeps are always so terribly loud. I mean, look at this. it fade out and it's going to bus pre-master maybe I should take it to text ord is that gonna work I don't think it's supposed to build 
up, not build down. So I'm going to take it straight back to the pre-master. These things always require a gain, so let's find a gain, which does the job of... Oops, what I'm looking for is actually the utility minus 12. Uh, yeah, I'll just do minus 18, because these things are always super loud. Super loud. Okay. Why does it fade out there? I'm really confused. Have I got a fade on here or something? Just turn that off. Strange. Can't figure it out. Do I want to? Yes, I do. Okay. Let's figure it out. These things are just lagging today. drops off halfway down and I have a feeling Yo, I'm gonna have some serious bugs with Ableton today okay this morph thing I don't know if it's working to be honest uh, I'm gonna backpedal a bit now than 100%. Maybe OTT is the culprit. I think it's weird. Okay, something weird going on. Hmm. Alright, I am going to disable this for now OTT, but not the envelope. Yeah, OTT is really messing with my vibe here. Yeah, it's not what I want. Okay. Uh, okay, let's try it again. sequence from the beginning let's just get a nice quick punchy intro and we'll see again we're gonna just mm. okay and then we'll take the sweep up in volume so I'm gonna take this up it's original. Okay, and we fade this in just with a nice standard sweep. Okay, remove automation mode, grab the fade. Okay, we're gonna just adjust the fade so it's a rapid. And we just get straight into it like that. And we also wanna make sure that this is a quite low uh, to begin. Well, by low I mean this um, envelope right in the beginning here. OK. 
Okay, let's get rid of all that. Cut all of that stuff. One, uh, sorry, let's just make sure it starts on five. So I like to start it on five. Cool. All right, so what have we done? We've uh, cut a bunch of stuff. Here comes just the intro. Okay, so the reason you didn't hear anything is because this filter here it needs to be up, so watch this. So I'm going to do that, uh, and then I'll send some of that echo to the send channels. So let's 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 work on that. I want this intro to be punchy. This may well be one of the like opening tracks of this collection, so it kind of counts. Um, so what I've got uh, in terms of like the filter is a bunch of different. MIDI mappings, all mapped to CC48, which is this knob over here. So what you'll find is that if I hit record now, it's going to record simultaneously on a bunch of different channels. I don't even know exactly which ones, but let's just try it out. Okay, so here we go, uh, recording with MIDI automation. Thin that out a little bit so it's not so thick. Okay, good. I'm doing a really slow build here. I hope it's recording. Huh. Let's double check. I know there'll be some info on the base. recorded that it's fine let's go back to start and take it again so I'm going to just also cut out two of these bars just to kind of start it to square on the five um, and we'll try the recording again this time monitoring it here we go <laughs> okay nothing recorded there so we're gonna have to work this out Overdub. No. Just record automation. Three, four. Cool. Could be quite cool for like a game or something. Okay, we'll bring that down. Dark. <laughs> Start a slow climb. Okay, we're bringing this up in the mix, bringing the, the bass up like this, and we'll bring it to about here, and now the bass will start to move in terms of melody. this first iteration happen without any intervention and I'm going to bring it up even more watch the red line I'm about to just uh, take it higher my standard fade over there one open it fully all the way okay so it's got like a nice sort of soundtrack feel to it now I'm just gonna mix some of these channels, but yeah, and then I don't actually need to. Be much more recording. Let's just drop it off suddenly as it reaches the end of this. If you're new to the channel, let me know what brings you here today, and uh, welcome. There we go, and we're gonna. Zzzz. We're going to the sort of rhythmic section. I make my tracks quite short, as you'll notice this is only two minutes long, it's going to probably stay that way. I don't um, see the need to stretch tracks out to three, four minutes because these aren't dance tracks, these are Creative Commons music, they're not um, mixed or intended for uh, DJing. So I mean, it sounds quite cool, but really it's designed for like, um, you know, like 
uh, insertion on like um, videos and games and that kind of thing where typically two minutes is enough cool so there we go that's cool it's yeah so what I'd like to change about this is there are a couple of things I'd like to change about this this is just actually as bad as it's gonna get <laughs> so I started this about eight weeks ago this was the first track of the cyberpunk pack that I'm putting together this is track 01 you can see up there so I was basically just learning everything I hadn't collected any presets or anything yet now I've got this folder called my stuff which contains an entire cyberpunk sort of device list these are all the devices that I've used throughout the making of the remainder of the packs so I'm going to start applying some of them to this mix over here before we get going uh, with the actual mixing but before I do any of that let's just do my sort of standard um, mode of operation here which is I'm just going to add colors to everything just to make it feel nice this wire base journey is more of a texture than a base but we'll just loop it in with a base that's fine typical base is usually about you know the blue stuff and then I make the harmony and the melody kind of usually around the yellowish color and texture I've got a bunch of textures here these are all kind of grouped together so we'll call them give them that and then we'll give the sweep a little bit of a gray color okay so now I can just assign all the colors so it looks kind of nice great a little bit of admin there uh, okay save it and let's figure out what's wrong with this cool one thing I want to do is take this sweep and apply it to all the major changes throughout the track so it's going to be anytime something starts or ends we have got this little sweep that comes in and just announces its presence so it's for example here could be a bit better so I'm gonna just redo that with by grabbing the automation handles and making sure the fade is a bit more obvious so here we go um, there is the contour or the shape of the fade let's just sweep it out to four bars instead of two so this is a typical way of um, sweep to sound nice because okay, so we're going to sort of slow onset and then we'll build it up to there two three four I actually want it to be more of a more of a, like a rapid onset at the end so it does have to kind of be quite low right up until the end I mean, maybe I can delete that node can I delete it I think I can let's try that no, okay, so these these are just basic fades. They're not they give you a bit of direction, but they're not going to give you advanced sort of multi-node um, ability. But you can apparently move the node further away or further. And if you can add a node here, no, okay, that's fine. We can just keep it like that, and so then okay, there we go. I'm going to actually drop it in before the break, before the hit, the snare hit. Okay, but I wanted to just smoothly move on to the hit, so gonna, I think the hit is going to be there. Just a bit late, okay. There we go, cool. So it doesn't uh, intercept the hit, so now I can take this over here and join that together. Just make it one standard sort of um, sweep that we can use throughout the rest of the track. Okay. Cool, you guys probably know how to do this, you're probably Ableton heads. What I'm doing is using Ableton to make Creative Commons music, and then I release that music into the wild. Here's an example of uh, some of the stuff I've recently put out. It's a free music archive. I just did this one today, actually. This is my um, 80s action montage. Totally different sounding music, but yeah, I just put this basically onto free music archive a few minutes ago. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I put them all over the place, Bandcamp, and uh, release them to streaming services. You can check the links. If you're into Ableton, you want some free downloads, do check the link in the description of this channel. You'll find um, the link to where I am. Um, routinely dump uh, stuff that I think is cool that people would maybe enjoy like remixing or working on on their own they're all self-contained Ableton Live templates so you're able to just download them if you've got Ableton Live 11 or later you'll be able to just um, start working on them without any uh, missing files or samples or anything like that okay so I like this melody pad but it's just a bit too high for me so I'm going to change this filter to a uh, high pass Sorry, I mean it's a bit too low. That's that's much better. It's got sort of a midway now. Not too glossy. There we 
we go. Much more subtle. That, to me, that works better. And let's take this. down, I don't want to be like too, too much, cool, okay, right, making some progress here, now this uh, texture pad, I think it's, not the texture pad, the harmony pad, there's definitely something not right about this, it sounds like it's too, yeah, it sounds like we could lose a little bit of the high end for starters. So let's just take the tone and the cutoff over here. We could take the max amount down. We do that by checking in this matrix over here. Filter one frequency. Let's just try that again. See how the maximum okay. harmony patch. This one here. So this controls the maximum amount. So I don't think it should go much higher than that, otherwise it starts to sound like it's like attacking your ears, you know? Cool, so just working on some cyberpunk themed, um, well, it sounds like cyberpunk to me at least. It's a futuristic sound, it's got, it's using wavetables and modern sort of sound engines. Um, and, um... I'm going to be releasing this as Creative Commons music, of course, as with all the stuff I do. So yeah, if you like this kind of thing of, you know, give it away in exchange for credit, then help me grow the channel, share, you know, share the idea behind what I'm doing with people, basically just making storytelling easier, making videos a little bit cooler than the typical crap you find, like for free, handcrafted, but also not too expensive. Um, yeah, at this point, we're going to have to knock up the... Uh, up the kit or something like that see this kit is actually not the right sound it's it's a good start but let's let's work on this kick a bit i think we need to get gilp what's happening dude gilp says do you have any plugin right now on the master the answer is no um i don't i've got isotope loaded of uh, isotope 5 but as you might know with uh these temp these templates that i make i try not to use any third-party plugins which <laughs> makes it very difficult because you can you know, you get a lot of cool sounds out there, but uh, the point is to make accessible templates. So no, no plugins on the master. It's all just default um, Ableton Live devices. The most, you know, the most uh, effective thing I've got, the thing that's giving the most effect, I guess, is the, the multiband compressor, but it's just a standard one. So um, not even OTT. Maybe we should try throwing OTT on there. Let's see what it sounds like, shall we? How are you doing today, Gilp? What brings you back, bro? How was your weekend? Did you do anything cool? I'm just going to do this carefully now because OTT tends to slap. Okay, here we go. Uh, output master down. Yeah, you see, it just brings that like hard sound to it, which I like. Maybe we could just take the, uh, just take the input values down to zero and see what that sounds like. Maybe we could leave that up at five. Yeah, OTT brings out a lot of the highs too. I don't really want that for this track. I want this to be more mellow and sort of muddy. Should we try to leave OTT on there? Let's give it a bash. And without it, it does tend to squash everything a little bit. Also, I've dropped the output, so it's going to be short, quieter. So let's listen to this. Yeah, it brings a bit of clarity to it. I think I'm going to leave it on there. It's not bad. At least it makes it sound a bit more modern. But now this uh, melody instrument is coming in a bit hot, so let's... Yeah, it sounds a bit better, doesn't it? Have I got enough headroom? Yeah, I do. So I'm going to actually do a little bit of a... This is like a bit of a cheat. I'm not sure if it works in terms of like proper mixing and mastering or whatever, but... Um, I'm going to take this utility and I'm going to compensate for the master levels with the utility. 
Bobby Butler Audio. What's up, dude? It says, you don't need third-party plugins on the master. Ableton has decent plugins to do that. My master chain is only Ableton plugins. I'm glad to hear that, man. I really am because, you know, you do feel a lot of pressure to, like, keep up with, like, all the latest compressors and stuff. And I'm not a device guy. I'm a music guy. These, are, these programs, to me, are, like, methods of just capturing... Um, you know, inspiration and capturing music. There are a lot of really good producers out there. I routinely praise my South African compatriot Dash Glitch. If you're interested in like how to go deeply into devices and presets, check out his channel. Um, but uh, f as for me personally, this is about, um, yeah, it's about flexing my musical muscles, my ability to imitate existing sounds using the little, you know, eight box of crayons that I have, so to speak. I'm, uh, that that to me is it's where artists kind of really um, outperform the the advances we're seeing in technology is like getting more out of less than um, you know I think you get what I'm saying. But anyway, thanks for showing up. How's your weekend? What are you uh, what are you busy doing right now? Well, you showed up yesterday and helped me with the. Um, I know there was a there was a bloke from Aussie, uh, Tom. Tom was like, "Dude, you your mic is off." And I realized the whole stream yesterday. <laughs> I feel like such an idiot. The whole stream yesterday, I'd been talking and doing my thing. The music worked, but my mic, I'd changed the sample rate earlier in the stream, which you can't do. And so it's like, um, OBS doesn't let you um, do that. So the mic just cut out, and I was just having a fat chat with myself, and no one was listening. So yesterday was a fail, but hey, you live and learn, you know. That's why, you know, <laughs> that's how you grow the channel, just figuring things out. Okay, cool. Yeah, but tell me about yourself, Bobby. I'm interested in your style, man. Like, I want to make a note to check out your channel after this. Yeah, this definitely sounds a bit better with OTT. I think they've done, done quite a good job with that plugin. Um, cool. So that's it, I think, for this channel. Let's just do the, the I mean, for this track. Let's do the um, admin work. So right now what I'm going to do is check out wh where exactly the faders are lying. Let's close that down and widen things up a bit so we can see what we're doing. Dunk. There we go. Cool. So these... Um, oh, you got to take the, take this thing up over here. Yeah, and then you see the... This is like mixing mode. Okay. Let's get into mixing mode. Cool, so I want all of these faders to be at zero. I don't think it matters too much, but um, it matters to me. So uh, let's get on this. Currently we've got a utility which is minus 12, and this thing is currently peaking at minus 33. Let's take it up and see what it sounds like. Let's play around with this a bit. Yeah, this is definitely the wrong kick. Unfortunately, I've got a chain of kicks that I can use to just quite quickly substitute this one out. So K1. You'll hear it here, and I can just go from this value 13, and I can just scroll up through using the key. All right, so it's kind of like polyplex or something where you're just kind of scrolling patches. That's a bit more thuddy, I like that, but it's still got that, um, it still sounds like. Oh, it's this hi-hat. The hi-hat makes it sound that way. Okay, it sounds like it's got a... Uh, it's getting a bit squashed, I think. And this melody patch is way too high, too. Okay, so let's uh, focus here. Drum rack. I'm going to take this all the way up. This is one thing you'll find about OTT is that you don't notice the differences in mixing too much. Okay, let's take that down to 24, minus 24. It's just like a little bit of a background channel. I feel like this should be uh, filtered out. Yeah. Just like that. That's the high stuff. That gives me that. Cool. How's this going? Are they both? Are they duplicates? Or is something not going to the... What the hell's going on? I'm just trying to figure out uh, where this rattly sound is coming from. I think it's both of them. Okay, so this one here, ice water, whatever. There's 
there are two plugins doing the same thing. So let's maybe I accidentally deleted it. Okay, let's take this minus up to 12 again. Okay, I think minus 12 will do it. Let's give it a look, give it a listen. Cool, this one over here is a duplicate, we don't need it. Now this one over here, uh, we've got to get also into shape, so I want this. It shouldn't actually modulate the track volume like that, that's not, that's not how you do it. That's quite cool because it's got a tonal drum sound. Let's make sure all these uh, tracks are going to the pre-master instead of to the master. Not bad. I like this very much, this uh, wire bass thing. So I'm releasing this sound over here as a, as a, well it's an Ableton Live preset. I've tweaked it a little bit, but I'm releasing it as one of the presets in this pack. Um, so let's just do a bit of renaming here. This might be the last time I work on this, because I tend to just release these things once they're ready. Let's take that down 21, which means we can pump that back up to the uh, original. I want the head drum. Let's take this down to 21 and hit that up there. It's an interesting sound. Okay, good. Let's take that over there and loop it over. Okay, we're gonna call this flutter, not drum rack. It's cool, we're gonna call this kit. Darbuka is not a darbuka, it is a... So why don't you tell me what it is? Yeah, it is actually a darbuka. Cool. And we could also do this, yeah, just kind of around the head like that. I'm not so sure about this. Let's take it down. Give it a little bit of edge, you know, a little bit of... Go, cool, yeah. Now, like I said, I'm not doing too much of a mixed job on this. Uh, I just do kind of the best I can. Uh... Texture, we're going to call... Oh, it doesn't help to call it texture, we're going to call it a wire. I think it's wire. Wire is a good way to describe that sound. Describing sounds is not easy. Okay, this is good. Uh, there's a bit of a noise in here. Maybe that might not be worth it. Maybe we could turn the mono off too. Yeah, I think wider is better, especially with soundtrack music. You want to leave a little bit of a space in the middle. So let's delete mono and let that go wider. on this. I uh, don't know about that. Let's take it down. Feels like it's cleaner, you know, cleaner without the noise. So let's take the noise down. A little bit nicer. Okay, saving. Let's move on. Harmony. Harmony also looks it's got automation on the master. actually just uh, changes the pitch somewhat so there's some strange that's quite cool and now it's, it does feel a bit thin though that's why I wanted it to be uh, that's what I wanted the sound of it to be a bit thicker like 
but then it sounds like it's bending. Maybe I've done some pitch bending on it. This was all done six weeks ago. I've been streaming every day, making um, these packs. Uh, you know, every day, 2 p.m. I show up here to work on this pack. Uh, at the moment, it's cyberpunk theme, but I've done a whole bunch of different stuff in the past. And uh, now I'm feeling that maybe I've got some kind of pitch bend on here, but no, maybe it's just interference. Anyway, that's um, fine tuning the stuff. I'm getting into the weeds here, not the idea. I want to keep it light, keep it moving forward. Let's get a utility and stick it on there. What do you guys think of this channel so far? You know, I've been really kind of, yeah, it doesn't matter how hard I've been working on it, but like, what should I do? You know, like, where should I go with this? I've got like, you know, 15 or maybe, you know, a bit more, like 18 years of like electronic music experience and producing sounds and I've got like hundreds of tracks online and I'm looking for input on how to take this forward. I've put out a like sur survey, I got like eight responses, maybe some of you guys responded, and it's seems like the idea is focusing on creative commons and for what that means and how I can help you know like share the knowledge about like how to um, gain a following using creative commons um, because one thing about giving music away for free if it's any good is that people tend to refer you and share your work and you know post it on their blogs and stuff and like believe it or not blogging is still big um, it accounts for a lot of SEO uh, and obviously YouTube is huge but like between the two of them blogging and YouTube and um, just good content really like I think that's the way to do it but I need help you know like I need help from the community on like where to take this channel and what to do with it so like complete the ears open okay so I'm kind of also just feeling a bit of ear fatigue on this section here let's just take it back to here this text audio section is a Bobby Butler says, I'm here to I'm here to see, see how you put things together, so tutorials would be great. Right, cool. Well, I mean, I can easily do, like, yeah, thanks, appreciate that. I could easily do tutorials on, um, specific, like, my process, you know, I don't know if that's, like, the right process or anything, but I do have a, like, solid grasp of Ableton and Reaper and um, the composition process, like, not so much the, you know, the math of it and, like, how the devices work and how the software works, but, um... I know how to put together like 10 tracks and release them on 10 different platforms and make, you know, um, over time, like, well, it's been thousands of dollars now. It's, you know, not like every day, but over the last five years, I've, I've made more than a handful of coins for for all of this. So, yeah, I guess there are different avenues. You can focus on the software, you can focus on the musicality, and you can focus on um, the monetization. Everybody wants a different thing, and that's why I don't know who exactly it is showing up to these streams who I'm trying to serve. Uh, some people are just doing this for a hobby. Other people have aspirations and goals of taking it, you know, into a side hustle or more. Bobby Butler says, "Yeah, but you know how to make synth sounds with stock Ableton plugins." Yeah, yeah, that's true. I've started renaming some of my Patreon posts uh, "Zero Dependency Ableton Live Templates." So. That I hope describes it. What do you think? Does it, does that describe what I'm doing here? Like stock plugins? Should I use the word stock? What are people searching for? Are there people searching for this type of thing? Um, you know, like yeah, you know, just help me out. Like, how do I? Who am I serving? Basically, the process that I'm been following for this, you know, the for this um, pack at least, the cyberpunk theme stuff is literally like here is the cyberpunk. 2077 game soundtrack it's two hours of music down here at the bottom you can't hear it because i get flagged if i play it but i've been listening and selecting tracks from this and going right i can hear this sound this sound this sound and then finding similar sounds in ableton and tweaking them so that they kind of match and then having like a palette you know and that's what this collection over here is i'll go to my stuff um cyberpunk i've been like selecting all these different bases and lead sounds and pads and hopefully it sounds, you know, sim similar to the original, uh, similar enough at least to be used in um, in various platforms or whatever. Bobby Butler says, try to upgrade to up Ableton 12. Everyone's on that at the moment. I think of doing some new meld synth tuts. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, um, upgrading to 12 is an option. I've heard that before. Um, it's definitely riding the trend because you can get noticed more. It does make it more difficult to 
gain any kind of following um, for of people or by people who are looking for editable templates themselves. So what I mean by that is um, if anyone's still on 11, Ableton's not backwards compatible. So if I'm releasing 12 presets, then am I serving fewer people? Like, because fewer people have had the chance to upgrade yet. I don't know if that makes a difference, you know, like I've been doing this stuff so long. I start to think that maybe I'm like, I overcomplicate things by like, assuming I've got this very specific person in mind and that actually put that actually filters out a lot of the people that you could be serving so yeah maybe Ableton 12 is the way I've heard like you know even like I've heard good things about Bitwig like I've, from what I've seen about Bitwig it actually does a lot of stuff that is superior to Ableton and um, after having tasted Reaper and tried out um, that kind of way of doing things I'm open to alternatives. Ableton does start to feel a lot like quite limited in some ways, but that's just because I feel like it's it's a DJ program and a composition. It's an excellent compositional tool. I don't think there's a better compositional tool than than Ableton. But I think the idea is that you come up with ideas quicker in Ableton, but you're able to like uh, you have, you have to your freedom and your workflow are greater in other programs that I've used at least. Um, key mappings, the, the ability to like create custom workflows, scripting, that kind of stuff's absent from Ableton. And the reason I'm stuck on it now, or the reason I'm using it is, you know, for the community, because I know a lot of people are on it. But like, if you look back through the stuff that I've actually been, I, I know, I've been using Reaper a lot lately in the last two years to, to write the actual, the work that I'm doing, like commissions and that kind of thing. So I don't know, I don't know, man, like help me out. Bobby says, why not do both Reaper and Ableton? I think you're trying to specialize too much. Well, yeah, one thing about YouTube is that you've got to specialize. Um, you've got to specialize, dude. <laughs> Those search terms, the long tail search terms are so specific. Like, um, yeah, it just, I mean, I appreciate the I appreciate the input because I am kind of lost at sea here. I feel like I'm lost at sea, but at the same time, I am getting, you know, like, like literally some of these works that I've made over the last couple of years of or in videos with tens of millions of views um, I'm on the map uh, but I've got to just figure out how to like turn the attention not into not into income necessarily but like just into like uh, a much more clear picture of who it is that I'm serving like so I can say okay I'm not really trying to serve people from Reaper and Ableton and Bitwig um, or whatever and then there's there's the learning curve too like i can't just start doing tutorials until i know like how the stuff works um but anyway i appreciate it, man i don't mean to just sit here and talk about my like you know, talk about my issues or whatever but like i am showing up here every day and trying to figure this stuff out that's what i'm doing you know and so it really does help specialize on the music not the door says bobby mm. yeah i think that's good advice like maybe I like this this beat that we got going here. This is pretty cool. Maybe you could do. Uh, what's the difference between these two? Hmm. Yeah, I specialize on the music and not the door. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm trying to do here. Uh, is so like last last month I released this 80s pack and the month before that was kind of like retro boogie so 70s funk style now it's cyberpunk so it's not by decade but it, I think about like independent game creators and video makers and I think um, so people out there right now someone is making an app that has it's a game and it's maybe a platform shooter or like platform game or a shooter or something and they need music for it action music and they really can't afford to com you know commission a composer to like do the score because these guys start at like five hundred dollars so my idea is to just kind of have this kind of good up-to-date crafted music available in the creative commons and then people do use it i mean i've got like like i said i've got like plays for days but i'm trying to figure out how to take it forward you know anyway i think a good start is just to focus not so much on the short term and um just 
kind of keep focusing on the long term, um, not so much the short cycles of like today, tomorrow, and the next day, but like the general pattern over the last six months has been subscriber growth, an increase in inquiries about commissions, an increase in you know the video stream rate and chat rates, meeting cool people like you, maybe collaborating is the way forward. I don't know. Um, figuring out like how to cross pollinate, maybe appearing on different podcasts as a guest or I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. Not like. I don't really, I don't really like, you know, I haven't really thought too much about this, what I've, my mind has been on the music. One, two, one, two, three, four. That's a nice ending. It works surprisingly well. I could just um, tail off a bit more, I think. Bobby Gilp says... Are you only into using Ableton? Have you ever tried Bitwig? Bitwig have, Bitwig have so much sound modulation possibilities with the grid. Dude, I'm starting to feel the pull of Bitwig. <laughs> like all the producers that I respect and the people I listen to are either dedicated or they say they've just joined it and it's, um, you have just started using Bitwig and it's got some like major advantages. So if it's a question between upgrading to Ableton 12 and trying Bitwig, I'm going to continue exploring and get onto Bitwig. I also think the, I think the community might be smaller but more passionate, which is useful for dudes like me. But again, like Bobby said, don't like it's not about the door; it's about the the music. And also, like for me, what what makes me different? The only really the only thing that makes me stand out from all the other producers out there is the fact that I like focus so heavily on creative commons I'm not a commercial music producer I don't want I'm not aiming to get the stuff that I make into Spotify playlists I'm not aiming to use it to leverage a career in performance and ticket sales and merch because I'm too old for that I don't care about touring I'm too far away from everyone else in South Africa there's no real industry here to support that online however is where, is where I can shine because I get backlinks. I get people who have used my music to draw a lot of attention to my work. So I get like a lot of website traffic and all that. I'm just trying to figure out how to, how to take it forward. And um, yeah, I mean, monetize it through community. And that's, that's how you do it, right? Like you get people who've got your back to shine a light on your work. Like a week ago, I had the, the good fortune of a friend of mine who I've written music for in the past he bought my catalog on, on Bandcamp for like $100, which is like a big sale for me, and it doesn't happen often. But the fact that I've put the music up on to all of these platforms, I don't know which one it's going to be that that um, gets used because I don't know exactly who's using them. Could be Bandcamp, could be Gumroad, could be uh, Directly. Uh, or through Patreon, I don't know. So that's why you've got to spend so much time in the admin. I mean, look at this. Just look at this freaking spreadsheet. Okay, this thing just goes on for days. You can start it here, up at the top, track one, which I released in 2019, and you could just scroll down, and you could just put like a paperweight on your down key, and just go and have lunch, and come back like two hours later, and it'll still be scrolling. These are the tracks that I've released like over the years. Each one of these is available on uh, streaming services, on YouTube as its own video, as well as like patch videos, like um, compilation videos, uh, and sites like Free Music Archive and Bandcamp and blah, blah, blah. So there's, there's tons of stuff out there is the point, and I'm constantly doing all this admin. Um, and it hasn't been worth the pay line yet, you know, like I said, I'm only earning, I'm only earning about like $2,000 a year doing all of this stuff. And I, I show up here like, you know, for an hour every day and I do more stuff on the, on the, on the side. So anyway, there's, there's, yeah, I'm organized exactly that. Thank you, Bobby. <laughs> Tian Luo Ma says, is cyberpunk music heavy electric music? Uh, welcome. Uh, I think it's Tian Luo Ma. Uh, what's up? Welcome to the thing, and yeah, I think it's very heavy electronic music. So the question is, what defines cyberpunk? Well, I've spent the last six weeks studying it, studying the soundtrack for the game at least. Cyberpunk is, one, it sounds futuristic, okay? So the devices that they use are stuff like wavetable devices, which you can see over here. They've got um, kind of more advanced um, uh, ed editing capabilities. So you'll see there's a... 
this thing over here, Wavetable in Ableton, is a standard sound of Cyberpunk. Two, foldback distortion, or digital distortion. So there are effects like, um, I'm going to just try one out now. There's the master crisp saturation. Let me just solo this, this synth out. You can hear what it sounds like with or without. So I've, I've put it on the end of the chain. Let's take a listen. It's just crunching a little bit quick. There we go, cool. Okay, so I'll just switch over here. So you can see this effect over here, master crisp saturation. Oh no, there we go, cool. That looks like something's changed. I've got to undo a bunch of stuff, hang on. Um, so yeah, digital distortion is a staple of cyberpunk. Um, and yeah, there aren't a lot of like uh, elements that aren't heavily electronic. It's all very electronic sounding uh, to answer your question. Something's changed. Hmm, anyway, yeah. So I was just showing off also the spreadsheet over here. Um, super organized. Like yeah, I've got links for my um, you know Gumroad and all this stuff. And I've, this is just uh, yeah, this is the clean version. It goes on for days. And because of that, I mean, I've like I've been studying React for the last three years. So I've been able to put together this cool kind of Spotify style app on my site. Um, which I wouldn't be able to do if I wasn't organized. So all of these tracks over here, you can play them. If you go to that URL, you can play these tracks and uh, yeah, they'll start up in the bottom there. And there's a random track selector over here. Let's just try this out. I don't know if we'll hear it, but uh, yeah, I'm just going to stick this on desktop audio. There we go. So I just clicked this button over here, the little dice button. And joy to the world. Let's try that one. Yeah, you should hear this now, like a long kilo fi Christmas carol. Uh, let's try another random one. Grand Theft Auto. This is all music that I've written like over the last five years. I'm stuck it on this kind of kiddie thief. That's a kid that is a thief, not a thief of kids. <laughs> Uh, Gilp says, the FX Grid's reverb presets is just for my taste and feeling better than most of the VSTs out there. Oh, you're talking about uh, Bitwig? Yeah, for sure. I'm going to try it out. Um, yeah, and then, sorry, just to switch back here is, uh, yeah, so each one of these tracks, also, if I click that download link, it'll take me straight to... <laughs> <laughs> this is the 90s stuff I was doing. It takes you straight to the product page. This is where people can download it di directly. So this is like a shortcut for monetizing tracks, $5 a patch, that kind of thing. I need to work in a volume. I'm just going to pause it real quick. You work in volume and stuff. But um, And then, yeah, the YouTube icon will take you to that same track on YouTube. So so this is what it takes, uh, in my opinion. <laughs> John Loma says, oh, it sounds really good. That is really cool. And Gilp says, I'm talking Bitwig. Cool. Yeah, all on the same page here. Um, so, <clears throat> yeah, like I spend, for every hour I spend making music, I spend maybe two hours doing admin and coding, trying to get this um, app into a, like a sexy form in a way that like, you know, converts. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's kind of the idea here, using a combination of like music and um, Patreon and React to build a solid foundation for, um, yeah, for like a career, basically. Because I mean, I've got, I've got skills, you know, and I'd like to, uh, I'd like to be of value, like everyone else would like to be of value to society. <laughs> it's kind of the master, master goal here. Take a sip of water. Out of my five liter jug. Ha 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 ha. Yeah. And then, uh, Tian Lua Ma, Tian Lua, uh, the, the other things that you'll find a lot of in, um, cyberpunk music is uh, it's influenced by dubstep and metal uh, these are the kind of the aggressive that we call as we say dystopian um, sort of sounds that you'll get in the game I don't know if you've played the game but I haven't and it's uh, it's uh, but it sounds like that that's the kind of feel this this type of thing here actually is quite cool I'm just getting into this now I'm just gonna crank it up a little bit this freaking dope man I love this stuff I 
I'm gonna get this earlier. This has to be earlier. Yeah. In fact, what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna insert the, I'm gonna insert a gap over here for uh, two of these or one of one of these. Call it. Let's just see how it could plays out if I stick it over there. There's a nice build up. And now we're gonna just drop it straight into this. Gilp says, is this music supposed to be for a video game? Yeah, this is fucking cool, man. <laughs> Taking it up even more in my headphones. This flutter is a bit high though. This is just a bit high. Let's take it down 6 dB. Yeah, that's it. Now we come with the melody patch. This should be playing a lot more harshly. I don't know why or how this changed. Let's try and fix fix this out. This has to be... Um, no, I don't want this to be tubularity. It's dropping off too quick. That's cool. Gilp says, is this music supposed to be for a video game? Well, it's supposed to be for Creative Commons, which means you can use it. Uh, indie game creators can use it in their production in exchange for crediting me. Or you could use it in uh, like a video. If you wanted to do a gameplay video of you, you know, doing playing Cyberpunk 2077. Or uh, even if it's just a hobby video, I don't know, you could put it to a video of you like chasing your dog across the park for all I care, as long as you just credit me and uh, uh, and you enjoy yourself while you're making it, you know? Let's do another one of these. I'm gonna duplicate this whole thing. Yeah, it's okay if it goes on a little bit here. It doesn't have to be like... Yes, I could really dig this if I walked into a room and this was playing. It's this thing here that's carrying it. Okay, cool. And I'm also just going to bring down the OTT highs a little bit. This is counterintuitive, but I'll just bring down the highs a little bit. I don't want it to be too hectic. And now we're going to go out in one, two, one, two, three, four. That's cool. It just does die off a bit quick. I don't know why it dies off that quick. But that's super rad, man. Okay, cool. I'm going to do a bounce of that. It's the end of the stream, kids. I will be back tomorrow at the same time, 2 p.m. UTC, 4 p.m. my time, whatever time it is for you. This has been a nice busy one. Thank you guys for showing up. Nice to meet you, Chan Wa. And uh, good to see you again, Bobby and Gilp. Always good to see you guys. Thanks for all the good questions in there steering the direction of this uh, channel um, I'm dying to know what to do next basically um, General says you should prompt yourself a bit more I don't know but I just felt like people would be very interested in how you create the music oh uh, cool thanks man I'm not sure how to prompt myself more but you mean like promote like I should be like you know like yeah you, you can I mean check out the check out the patreon I have these templates which are self-contained so you don't have to have external samples or VSTs they're all available uh, on patreon and I'm releasing new videos every 10 days of uh, tracks the current style is 80s action so I released one earlier today so check out the latest video in my feed and you'll get a sense of what the next 10 videos are going to be like it's like power 80s action like hard rocking also you can use these videos in your games uh you can use these this music in your games and thanks very much for the compliment uh I, it's always good to hear you know that people appreciate how i how i make music uh, i've been doing it my whole life and uh, yeah I, I really dig seeing you guys showing up here and you know chatting with me that's super super cool it always puts a smile on my face no matter how bad i'm feeling i always feel like 
like and the, the other people out there are like kind of interested in doing cool stuff like this so thanks Bobby says have a good one mate see you tomorrow again hopefully ciao for now but <laughs> thanks bro appreciate it cool I'll see you guys tomorrow I'm just gonna let this whole track play while I pack up in the background and stuff so yeah thanks again see you soon cheers